the center or any vicious hemorrhage will have a normal vision and that's what is the uh, problem for an, any diabetes doctor or an eye doctor to explain to a, a public and so uh, which is the age old prevention is better than cure and that's what we are doing for corona and i, I think we should do that for tuberculosis for the diabetes also so the risk of diabetes that's why we should know the risk the risk of the duration of diabetes poor control pregnancy can aggravate diabetes if not if you are not avoiding pregnancy but i think if you are pregnant and have diabetes you should control hypertension and it's a deadly combination with diabetes and nephropathy hyperlipidemia smoking cataract surgery can aggravate diabetic retinopathy but wherever required you have to do anemia and obesity so you can see in this picture the normal artery and then the uh, with the cholesterol the artery is becoming narrower because the lumen is blocked by the cholesterol and uh, let us understand the pathophysiology the here you see diabetes produces a hyperglycemia and it can have a macroangiopathy and a microangiopathy but i think uh, every medical student or a, med a medical doctor knows diabetes is a microangiopathy that means affects the small blood vessels of the body so for a layman the diabetes affects the brain that's how they have stroke it affects the heart you have the ischemic heart disease it affects the retina that's why you have the diabetic retinopathy it affects the peripheral nerves and that's why the peripheral neuropathy it affects the uh, kidney that's why you have the nephropathy so microangiopathy leads to neuropathy retinopathy nephropathy and then you have the disorder of the intracellular metabolism of uh, sorbitol increases you have the loss of vessels parasites disruption of the blood inner retinal barrier that's why we have macular edema you have a, a hard exudates which again is an indicator of ischemia you can also have the disorder of the basement membrane weakness of capillary walls microaneurysm thrombosis and capillary closure which finally produces ischemia which produces the increased vascular endothelial growth factor which produces new vascularization if we still don't treat develop new vascular glaucoma traction retinal detachment vitreous hemorrhage and that's how the angiogenesis and this is the pathway and then you have vitreous hemorrhage you don't treat you have traction detachment you don't treat you have new vascular glaucoma you don't treat that's how the blindness happens so all this to happen minimum the diabetes uh, should be there for 5 years then only the retinopathy starts and here you see the microvascular occlusion all that cannot start for example i don't know i'm uh, the ophthalmologist in the um, uh, this uh, webinar and i'm sure you will see patients will come and tell you no sir i have only diabetes uh, two years back detected how can uh, my be i be affected but the pity is in india we don't do a diabetes test uh, for example if the parents are having diabetes i recommend from the age of 30 they should do yearly uh, fasting sugar and uh, postprandial sugar then only if there are five years they are normal and the sixth year they develop that for example at the age of 35 you become uh, pp sugar is increasing and then the uh, fasting sugar then you call it diabetes that means you say diabetes is starting now but in india suddenly when you go for some test or you have a boil which is not going or some swelling some injury or you go for some other test and you do a to routine blood test and find blood sugar 300 then when you do hbo and see it will be uh, something like 8 9 and then you by you argue that doctor no 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 only the diabetes start it is not so that i think i hope in the through this lecture i hope i can tell the various uh, pathogenesis and make sure, sure everybody understands yes sir sorry to disturb you uh, the uh, the presentation is not in uh, present now boots at the full screen is not there we are seeing the grid now no? we are not able to see your screen sir one second so you might have to press the present now button so then it will no, i don't know it's there uh, uh, yes okay. now now it is coming up sir okay sorry to interrupt sir No, 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 no. Better than prayer. Otherwise, uh, I said, told you, no. I really don't know what's happening. <laughs> yes. <laughs> One second, I'll come back there. Yes, yes. So. Uh... So I'll just quickly. Go. So, you can see the uh, uh, right the slides. So you can see the slides now. You can see the yes, presentation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So th this is just to say the risk factors, and then the pathophysiology started. This is the logarithm which is there in the books. Habit is producing a microangiopathy, and then finally you will end up in blindness. And all this starts uh, 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 at least it takes minimum five years. 
So the microvascular occlusion is the basic thing which happens, how it happens, endothelial cell damage and proliferation, capillary basement membrane thickening, increased plasma viscosity, deformation of retinal, the RBC, increased platelet uh, stickiness, which produces increased capillary blood flow and perfusion, retinal hypoxia, wedge of production, neovascularization, rubiosis, proliferative retinopathy, and wedge of also produces the AV shunt, Irma, that cotton wool spot, which you are seeing as a, a diagram. And you see the rubiosis that it is, and uh, proliferative retinopathy. So, if you see this here, decreased capillary blood flow and perfusion. And that is why exercise will make the blood flow from head to foot. And that's why I think we, uh, it should not be done in a proliferative retinopathy. That is why exercise will open up all the blood vessels. And I think it's very important, however old you are, I think you should do exercise. And I think uh, either you do exercise or do dance. I do both. And I think that's what uh, is important to be fit. Clinical features and staging. So you saw the pathophysiology. And you can see in a, 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 an eye looking like this with a heart accident not exactly near the fovea can have still normal vision. So vision is not a criteria to diagnose a diabetic retinopathy. So whenever there's a diabetes diagnosed, I suggest irrespective of the WHO guidance and uh, various organizations giving guidance that uh, you should check the retina after five years of diabetes, all that is not practical for India. And I, with my 36 years of uh, retina practice, I want to say if somebody at the age of 30, 40 or 60 diagnosed first time diabetes, please do a baseline photography. And now doing a photograph is uh, very economical. What I meant is it is a, it can be, uh, it can be taken in a mobile, which I'll be showing you how I'm doing it for screening. So you see the heart accidents, you see hemorrhages, you see microaneurysm, you see cotton wood spot, which is put as an arrow, which indicates diabetic retinopathy. And then the, this is an American Academy of Ophthalmology staging guideline. You have the normal fundus, you have moderate uh, uh, non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy called NPDR. You have only microaneurysms, moderate NPDR, which has more than just microaneurysm, but less than severe non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy. And the UK equivalents, they call it RO, R1, R2, and R3. And we have it as uh, normal, moderate, non-proliferative, severe non-proliferative, and proliferative. So what you have to know is, you have the four stages, you have the severe non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy with the vision can be normal, but the retinopathy is advanced. In any one of the following, more than, or any of the following, more than 20 interactional hemorrhages in each of the four quadrants, definite venous bleeding in two plus quadrants, prominent IRMA in one plus quadrant, and no signs of proliferative diabetic retinopathy. And proliferative diabetic retinopathy, again, you can have a, a normal uh, vision, but you have one or more of the following, neovascularization, with hemorrhage, pre-retinal hemorrhage. Again, with all this, you can have normal vision. And I think uh, that is why you have to know that uh, vision will is not the criteria. And that is why fundus photo, if you are taking, give a copy to the patient so that or if you don't have a, don't want to take a printout, you can send it by WhatsApp nowadays to the patient. So the patient has it in his own mobile and say, this is a normal retina, this is an abnormal retina, and this is how the retinopathy is starting. And then the other is diabetic macular edema. This is a fundus fluorescent angiogram, which shows uh, where you give a dye and then take a, a photograph with the uh, filters, you see the uh, hyper uh, uh, fluorescence and then optical coma optography showing my diabetic macular edema. So, this is again the diabetic macular edema is called as a clinically significant macular edema, otherwise, CSME. You have retinal edema within 500 microns of the center of fovea or retinal edema, one disc area or larger, any part of which is within one disc diameter, 1500 microns of the center of fovea, and hard exudates within 500 microns of the uh, center of uh, fovea with congestion edema, which may be outside 500 micron. And all this compresses of clinical macular edema. The reason is, this is to compare, and then that is the reason you find us photograph, will explain everything, and then the patient can have the pre-treatment and post-treatment photograph, both pre-treatment and post-treatment OCT. So the patient knows, because many times you, can, you cannot calculate the success by vision. So the management, controlling the risk factor, so the hyperglycemia, hypertension, hyperlipidemia. And then the local eye treatment is laser photocorrelation of retina and pass pain of tracheotomy. And now, the, with the instead of laser photocorrelation in the uh, ETD, uh, in the 
drcr.net they are using anti vascular growth factor injections uh, uh, monthly which is again uh, it's not controversial the problem is because of money and still that about a few years back the laser is the, is the standard uh, treatment and even today it is a golden standard for india because laser is more economical than giving monthly anti vascular endothelial growth factor uh, as per the drcr.net and pharmacological treatment involves the the steroid implant uh, the corticosteroid and anti vascular endothelial growth factor injections which are, and also agents involved in biochemical pathways the indication that this is the uh, uh, gold standard before the anti vascular growth fa- factor the for the uh, clinical seeing with macular edema we had a focal laser and diffuse laser and even in today's uh, 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 situation with all the advances if the fovea we can treat with extra fovea treatment with the laser and still maintain the vision and i think you should either do the focal or the diffuse and a indication for the panracal photocoagulation when you can you can't afford the monthly anti vascular anti vagus treatment you have a, the indications are for high risk proliferative diabetic retinopathy very severe non proliferative diabetic retinopathy and patients who already started rubiosis iodis the simple terms we destroy the peripheral retina so requirement of oxygen or the anoxic retina is removed so that the disc and macula is the only area without laser which is preserved so that the patient has the central vision the color and contrast sensitivity is affected when you do a laser but a laser is being done from 1970s that means almost 50 years of laser and patients are still having 65 and 5 with some peripheral vision problem that's why in the concern form we take that it will affect the peripheral vision and that's how the laser is done you can see fresh Uh, the yellowish white spots and you see some old spots on the temporary the optic disc and the macula is spared and rest of the area is totally uh, uh, destroyed and here we are doing willfully and that's why the uh, the power everything is uh, controlled by the surgeon it is exactly like using the laser and bombarding uh, any city which we can do a remote same thing can be done with the laser that's why even in the laser uh, treatment we have a navi laser laser it is like exactly uh, 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 like remote control but the physician is sitting behind the machine and you see here the new letters which grow the vitreous acts as a scaffold and that's how uh, the i'm just showing to you you're able to see the video right coming Yes sir yes sir So this uh, this is how the this is a cross section this is from the old uh, uh, booklet which my father had uh, kept it and uh, the uh, uh, you can see the cross section of retina which is a uh, pirate to jiradesign.com and thanks to dr aishwarya who has prepared all this for me added up the presentation where you see the we new blood vessel which is growing into the vitreous and that's what bleeds and that's why when the blood pressure goes up in the mid uh, early morning that's around 3 o'clock it's normal even in a normal patient the bp can raise it is not an uh, hypertension and in hypertension of course when it raises even little 10 mm in the uh, systolic and i think this uh, fine blood vessels gives way and that's why many patients will tell sir i was slept when i went to the bed normally but when i go up i can't see with one eye and sometimes rarely both eyes can be uh, blind that means uh, the patient has not checked his uh, retina at all that's why we are doing a study we ask every day de- patient with diabetes what is the duration of diabetes when did you go to the eye doctor for first time and when did you get your retina check and you see the uh, external photograph where you see a uh, angry looking blood vessels on the surface of the iris and iris there should not be any active blood vessel like this and that is how the normal iris will look and here you see angry looking blood vessel which is a cephalan photograph and uh, which shows the rubiosus iridis which once upon a time was a dye's bond and now i give anti vascular endothelial growth, growth factor into the anterior chamber and with at day stamp and in case there is a view 
I do the laser. I, there's no view because of vitreous hemorrhage. Then I do a vitrectomy with dental laser. And definitely, it is like putting the hand in the fire. What, I, what do I mean by that? When you have an angry looking blood vessel like this, sometimes after the laser, the hemorrhage happens. And that is because of the vitreous pull or because of the uh, rubiosis. And then that time, after the laser or after the surgery, if you have a recurrent hemorrhage and the patient thinks that after your treatment, the patient has gone blind. No, the patient was going blind and you are trying to help him. And that is why I tell there's a fire happening and we are putting our hand. So there's a possibility that you and me both can get burnt. And if you are ready, then I will do the treatment. That means you need counseling, we need patient education. And I recommend that whoever is watching this to learn, have a self-health education. What is self-health health education? All of us are into digital now. That means we are using WhatsApp, video. And uh, that's why we did a, a program called WhatsApp Vision Syndrome. Dr. Mona was a part of that program. Where uh, the idea is everybody is doing everything through even maybe watching this program through the, uh, the link through the WhatsApp. And then you open the link and then you see. And I think the uh, main thing is... Uh, the uh, uh, you, you, what I'm suggesting is that you should read information education on diabetes. If your, your patient has diabetes, please send the material on uh, WhatsApp. The patient can read it, or uh, and then they uh, they understand. The other way they come and there's a habit of blaming the doctor or the treatment. So I think we have to do self education so that they know that diabetes is not a one day disease. It's a disease starts from whichever day and goes up to the grave. So we have treatment like uh, the first one above is a implant, which is a what do you call a, the Ozotex, which is a uh, and then the other is anti-vascular endothelial growth factor. We have Evastin, we have Lucentis, and then we have after that we have the uh, in just none of these works laser injections and then nothing works then the patient develops the next complication or if they come with this complication then they have to opt for vitrectomy and the first vitrectomy in the world was done in 1970 by robert mcamar and the first vitrectomy for diabetic retinopathy was done in 1971 and those days they were waiting for one year now even if the hemorrhage is there for two weeks and if the patient is ready medically fit i we do surgery we even give a uh, intravitreal uh, anti uh, injection 24 hours or 48 hours before and then do surgery but when there's a proliferation like this with traction we do not give anti which will produce more problems so the indication for vitrectomy is a non-clearing vitreous hemorrhage severe proliferative retinopathy not responding to laser treatment traction lateral detachment threatening macta combined traction and retinal like detachment in india we see the last two very often and also in mexico uh, operated in mexico they have terrible retina but uh, in the us and europe most of the patients know when they are diabetic and they go for regular treatment regular evaluation and then they get laser and then they get complication the vitrectomy is very simple and the success rate is very high but in india and mexico we see late complications and, and then the results are bad and i think that is where i hope the cme is like this will uh, prevent those complications and i think i remember in uh, 1988 when peter hamilton from uh, uh, yeah, Boorfields came to just look and uh, see me and he told me that time I was in the audience he said oh you know Dr. Natarajan we can do laser and make, go, make all vitreous surgeons go out of job what did he mean is if you do laser for every diabetic uh, patient with proliferation they will not uh, need vitrectomy but it doesn't happen because the pathogen is like that instead of laser 90% are successful, 10% will land up with hemorrhage. And those patients, if you do vitrectomy, the visual recovery is almost 99%. That means they can get even 6-5 of the vitrectomy. And even with traction detachment, you would away from macula. With the hemorrhage, you can have wonderful uh, results. And you have a macular edema with the vitreous traction, rubious hyoidus with vitreous hemorrhage, anterior hyoidal fibrovascular proliferation, which you see rubiosis and then there's a severe proliferation close to the lens. And here we have classified diabetic macular edema, fovea involved, fovea not involved. If the fovea are involved, there could be vision loss or no vision loss. It could uh, have no previous cataract surgery or a previous cataract surgery or an intraocular uh, antivascular growth factor or an intraocular steroid. And we have to also make sure to evaluate the optic disc before you give the steroid injection. That's why I get a glaucoma evaluation done. So please, whatever specialist or a subspecialist you are, glaucoma specialist or a retina specialist or a comprehensive ophthalmologist, learn to look at a patient whole. 
That means right from the time he walks. Maybe he has a diabetic foot, he wouldn't tell you. If he's wearing a shoes, you may not know, but if the way he walks, he will know. So, you will see his gait, you look at him, how he comes into your room, how he sits, and then the patient has a hole, then the face and the eye, the lids, then go in from cornea to everywhere. So, examine the patient and then go to the retina. So, laser is still the main of uh, treatment for diabetic retinopathy in India and halves the visual loss due to diabetic macular edema or proliferative diabetic retinopathy and decimates need for Prosperity and unfortunately, this is not happening. And as a president of Maharashtra of Thalmas Society, about 10 years back, and a few years back, and as a president of Bombay of Thalmas Association, I this is what I told why not every of them I just learn to diagnose diabetic retinopathy and prevent diabetic retinopathy by referring or doing some uh, uh, prevention and then you can prevent them coming to a veterinary surgeon. I'm not putting people like me and Shama. <coughs> out of the job. But what I'm saying, if you do that, only the most complicated patients will come to us. And then, <coughs> it doesn't work. Only systemic control does not uh, prevent diabetic complication. What I want to convey to the diabetologist, to the undergraduates, is control of diabetes is 100% uh, read, needed. And control of diabetes does not control the eye does not control the kidney, does not control the heart. So I think you need to control diabetes and the respective organs separately. That's why we need a teamwork. And that's why sometimes patients wonder, why I have a patient two days back, he developed stroke and need to, the patient's wife comes and tells me, no, 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 diabetes is under control. I don't know what is the cause for stroke. I'm telling them nicely and without losing temper, I'm telling you, come on, you're, that stroke is because of diabetes. No, no, she's saying, no, no, diabetes is under control. Anyway, I then told them, you, uh, go to the neurologist, go to the diabetologist, go to the physician. Then the patient asks, oh, that means uh, you, are, you are referring and making me spend more money. They are not able to understand that microangiopathy has affected all parts of the body. So, you have to treat that separately. It is not a money-making idea. I think the idea is you have lost your control, you have not done your exercise, you have not eaten properly. And that is why I always tell Eating good food is the most difficult job any individual can do in this country and particularly during uh, COVID where everybody eats anything. And if you eat anything, you will end up in problem, either diabetes, hypertension, fat and cholesterol. So, we need a teamwork between eye doctors, <coughs> sorry, diabetologist, physician and also voluntary organization. That means uh, the diet, nutrition and uh, control spirituality, yoga, whatever. I think <coughs> all that is mandatory. And uh, we have the uh, uh, foundation, which was actually, Dr. Abdul Salam put a, uh, he told me, put a twinkle in the eye. So we are doing the largest free work in diabetic retinopathy in the world, in all the slums of Mumbai. And I'm proud to tell that here, my presentation is not over, because that's what I was telling Dr. Aishwarya. So, in, in the meantime, Shamak, you can ask some comments. I'm opening another one for uh, just to uh, tell uh, what is my what I did as a president of the of Talmud Society. So, before I start the, the next, uh, I think, which I'll go through, run through, I'll not repeat uh, the same. I'll skip the slides. So, you can, in, in between, ask me some questions. I'll uh, just stop the screening for some time. Sir, um, actually, you have uh, you have uh, presented it very well, and uh, actually, all, I think it has been presented in such a basic way that I think all the PGs and uh, undergraduates must have under understood quite a lot. Uh, but is there any way? Is, is there any is there any way they can ask me questions directly, or uh, through so you? I, so I think through the chat section they can ask questions. Okay, maybe uh, as somebody of now, should the read that. No, somebody should read the chat either Dr. Mona or you and then ask me. But in the yes. way, if you want to add something, you can add. Uh, sir, I just wanted to add a point that uh, I was with uh, Professor Constable in Australia yes. uh, in 2014-15. And uh, what what I noticed was even the Aboriginals there had a similar kind of presentation right. uh, like we Indians do. The right. very uh, tractional kind of retinal detachments and the very thick fibrous membranes. So, I feel it has something to do with the genetics of that uh, individual or uh, how it goes, I really don't know. But then that was yeah. something so, like observation for me. So, you're right. I think 
there, there is a book by written by my friend unfortunately he died anatomy of success dr rakesh sinha one thing i want to tell about australian aborigine i don't know whether you know australian aborigine genetically have the best vision in the world that means they have 6 by 3 and uh, yes. that, that is why that is because i think evolution they have used it they have bow and arrow and they are killing uh, they are getting their food by killing animals i'm sure some time also they should have 6 by 3 i think so i always tell them thank god touch wood i have a 6 by 4 even today so thank for that because i wanted to be a pilot with a panoramic vision but uh, coming back to the aborigine mexicans indian and we have a habit of blaming to genetics i agree i think the dr rakesh na he told about it i don't know why he died but uh, you know he died for he was a marathon runner and we i think he probably had some genetic uh, problem which nobody knew i'm trying to look for that book but it's there you know so yeah it's that i'm sitting with my library so this is the book the anatomy of success by rakesh na and he there the he is actually got a a, a a chapter which he says there is a 26000 reason you indians or anybody tells uh, that i cannot do you know what is that that is gene gen- gen- genetics see this is the one i still remember 26000 genes we have and we say that we can't uh, uh, because of genetics i am uh, i am like this because of genetics i am intelligent i am because of genetics i am idiot because of genetics i think uh, everything is acquired genetics is there because that is why i am looking yes. like a uh, rajini kan like kala no no problem that's why the kala movie came from so i want to go so apart i think genetic is there because my son argues with me because i am trim and uh, i actually we used to, i mean this is i'm a confession i hope my son doesn't sue me uh, 20 years back i uh, think or maybe 20 years back when he was very young we used to eat three plates of chicken and he puts on weight and i don't put on weight and that is genetics so he used to tell me you hog like a pig and uh, you're not putting on weight and i put on weight and i gave him the idea but i think i used to tell him maybe if i run 1 km he has to run 10 km so if i do t- but the, my problem is i already run 10 km and he runs 1 km and he blames the genetics so i think uh, genetics is a reason but we have to fight it out i think all of us right. can fight it out whether you are yes. that is why that of our swami sukhananda say that i even uh, albert einstein uh, said i don't like the normal education that's why he was he was a jew and he didn't like the christian school he said it is like a military everything 9 o'clock this period 10 o'clock that period he hated it that's why he didn't study and that's why the school teacher uh, actually expelled him at the ninth uh, and then the, he told the father you take your son and the father asked him can i do anything he said he is a good for nothing duffer you take him and put him in any school no use he will not do well you won't believe what he did in life you know no i mean i, I think that is where the genetics is being blamed i know aborigines have that but aborigines have that genetics of good vision and i think the aborigines yes. also eat anything they want and aborigines yes. earlier were uh, like our indians were walking and doing agriculture may particularly yes. you are in nagpur and i think people were walking to the field from home yes. that means even wherever they were staying they were walking and even now dr amte dr prakash amte and he, he comes stay in my building there and we both got the top uh, uh, 10 young indians uh, about 20 years back so uh, what i try to tell i think he even now lives in kachiroli right in the yes, uh, thing and then he lives with the nature he walked and he i mean i think that the natural exercise we have lost so aborigines yes. have lost that now they are all if you see they are in the parks in australia and the uh, yes, government yes. of australia gives them money and they but eat any bullshit food uh, all this american food uh, mcdonalds and all fat food they eat they are now blaming genetics so i think yes. the same problem with mexico and that's why the mexicans also uh, tell them uh, all they actually they have a pre hispanic food which they were eating ants and uh, uh, something there when they gave me i could eat i was almost about to vomit because they told they were eating ants and uh, i forgot something all the worms and all and that is delicacy and i i, I think they that's all the digestive and more than uh, fat food so what i'm trying to tell is finally diet so my to do she is taking carbohydrate protein carbohydrate everything balanced with vegetables so i think she is doing for last so many 18 90 years and that's why i think she is healthy so all diabetics even if you are prone for example grandparents parents have diabetes as a grandchildren you may be 30 40 you should make sure you prevent diabetes how do you prevent eat less eat healthy food so i tell even amd if you eat less fat food 
and uh, you and the less uh, environmental uh, uh, what do you call it? you will have uh, uh, prevent diabetes i just quickly run through this uh, presentation i have and dr mona yes sir sure, sir yes sir. yes sir sure do you have any questions sir you have covered everything i think <laughs> no no i have covered nothing is left nothing is left so So that the, all this just uh, so this is what I wanted to say. As an All India President, we did this. Dr. Radhika screened uh, the coined this acronym, yeah, Stop Blind Diabetic Blindness. This is what I want every citizen of India to know this, and I want the Prime Minister to know. He had his birthday, and I think uh, he is able to do control and keep his uh, fitness by doing yoga and exercise. And the same thing, I think he is. Uh, at least take that example. and uh, i want to say, do the screening through tele ophthalmology to prevent uh, diabetic blindness and this is the epidemic of the 21st century and that is why dr babar and the past president said uh, the word diabetes uh, is diabetes invariably affects both eyes test your eyes soon and this is by ima and all india ophthalmic society and then all this we already saw and i'm just skipping the slide so i want to say that we recommend primary checkup at the time of diagnosis in every individual when as soon as you diagnose diabetes check the retina whatever the public says you change the concept what is the concept spend that whatever rupees it may be take 50 rupees for somebody 5 rupees for somebody or 500 rupees or if you come to me 5000 rupees to take a fundus photograph so i think you can do government is doing free under the national control for prevention of blindness i'm sure nagpur medical college and may you are all doing free we go to private you pay i think you can do that so this is a video uh, which i made and we spent uh, all india ophthalmic society and alargan spent about 25 lakhs and we gave a best prize to the international advertising association which made a movie beautiful movie and i want everybody to see this This is a golden day is a silent movie you only have music so i'm just passing here the world will forgive you but will you forgive yourself and i think we have to make a poster which is what i wanted to recommend to every pharmaceutical company and put it in every eye clinic with an aoi symbol so that no eye doctor is promoted here it is only to promote the health of the patient and i think all of us are doing this cme not to glorify ourselves i think we are doing this to uh, treat the patient and i want that undergraduates to see this and appreciate So this is a second take home message diabetic blindness is 100% preventable but after the diabetic uh, diabetic retinopathy sets in then you come and tell please prevent please prevent how do you prevent and that is the problem it is not reversible so if you are a diabetic you need a retina checkup to prevent vision loss so checkup will not prevent that is what the public i think the public perception is if a general doctor refers a, a, a gp for example a gfam or whatever he is a homeopathy doctor or ayurvedic doctor is practicing and refers a patient for a, to an eye doctor for screening they think it is like a, making money 
so it is not and i want the every undergraduate to see this and every gp to see this and tell them hey you are diabetic you will prevent man i think by giving a, a consultation uh, you are going to prevent him so this is a public service initiative to prevent diabetic retinopathy which was screened uh, thanks to my friend ramesh narayan who is now the vice president he screened in 4000 times in all the national channel as you know there is only a 48 second video which uh, everybody forgets so now i actually sent to this uh, government of india uh, dr uh, promila gupta who is now the advisor and she was a former director general of health services and for the current if we have anybody has influence we have a, our member of parliament from nagpur dr vikas mahath have given him and they have to continuously tell them to pay by the films division in every movie including the uh, what do you call netflix and everywhere they should screen <coughs> that is why through all india i am promoting screen diagnose and treat and that's what uh, we want to convey here what do everybody has to do they have to create a pre camp or a check up assembly of diabetics so now during covid follow the social distancing follow the sanitizing capture image it can upload it you can diagnose by eye doctor by image grader or a reading center or using the offline artificial intelligence or online at, uh, artificial intelligence i'm glad i'm one of the authority on ai even though google doesn't consider that but uh, unfortunately google is not coming to commercial but what i have used it comes and unfortunately I, I think I want uh, undergraduates to know we have thirteen variants of diabetes, which is what Dr. Uh, uh, Shamak was telling about uh, the genetics. So these are all, and we have one the steroid induced diabetes, we have the uh, gestational diabetes, and then uh, all these are uh, uh, artificial; it's not a genetic. And then you have secondary diabetes. So we need a multidisciplinary uh, approach: dietitian, endocrinologist, ophthalmologist. I mean, I can't believe that uh, even though diabetes can be treated by a general practitioner. mbps doctor jam ayurvedic whatever but they don't know i think once in their uh, at, uh, at lifetime they should go to an endocrinology they don't know that endocrinology pre uh, uh, studies uh, the science of diabetes but don't understand and we, I, my best friend is a uh, endocrinologist dr uh, shashank joshi who is now the advisor to government for uh, government of maharashtra for the our coronavirus uh, plus uh, my other best friend is the authority in india who is dr mohan vishwanathan and then other endocrinologists is dr nikhil tand and james we are all together and we made a module in phfi we are trying to tell how otherwise how do we tackle the 77 million diabetics among them 50% are not diagnosed so i don't know how to do this every individual i want to i'm not contesting election but i want every individual to know that i am spreading this news better primary prevention better malic control lesser rate of developing progression of diabetic retinopathy still a significant number of patients continue to develop vision threatening complications that require complete treatment so problems faced in our health system that is the reason i'm presenting this one eye doctor per 100000 population and nagpur and around will have the same problem and low awareness which is uh, even in uh, mumbai or in delhi Yeah, low ever you go to a company or you go to a comp- uh, secretariat or in parliament i am sure uh, they are ignorant about diabetes and diabetic retinopathy 70% of the indian population resides in rural area and that's where you are there and they uh, compared to the urban and or the urban slum and technical difficulties we have unreliable internet coverage i should not blame now the internet is working for all of us deficit in supply of electricity shortage of trained medical staff portability of conventional retina cameras and that is why i have designed this thanks to my team this is manish who is doing the and that thanks to the uh, world diabetic foundation which supported our aditya uh, jyot diabetic retinopathy urban mumbai some study where everybody can copy this and i have also copied from shankar netralaya or uh, chitrakoot or uh, shroff charity i think we we can copy each other there is no secret here i'm glad we got about uh, 1.2 uh, uh, crore from tata foundation and then we also had from uh, world diabetes foundation so we are able to do the zeiss camera in the van which went all around maharashtra and now we have got this uh, forest camera which we are taking in the motorbike thanks to k chandrasekhar who promoted i don't have any financial interest with any company and now i'm using the artificial intelligence with the uh, remedio so i want to define i don't know whether any of the undergraduate knows uh, what is artificial intelligence i'm i'm not criticizing i want to stimulate all of you i want you to think 
because everybody don't know what is artificial intelligence you know why not everybody i'm not bringing you people at least i my staff i criticize at least i can i can i i own the my staff so i can criticize them i ask them first of all you know what is intelligence then you have to understand what is artificial intelligence that's why i made this slide intelligence is the capacity to analyze think make a decision and categorize and i think our god has given it and this is what the albert einstein tells everybody is intelligent only the teachers make them idiots by calling them are you are idiot and so many teachers call me idiot but uh, have i become idiot that's what the uh, swami sukhavan says let the teacher call you idiot you just laugh inside don't laugh at the teacher but you you question yourself now why are you called idiot and then that is what is intelligence then you become an alfred einstein uh, gave an excellent uh, uh, explanation he said make a mistake that is in science accepted but don't make the same mistake again and again then you become idiot so it is easy unfortunately we, we know how not to become idiot but all of us become idiot without realizing so i want to use this ai uh, uh, explanation artificial intelligence involves formulating a specially made algorithm according to our needs to develop this capacity and include it in an electronic device like smartphones so i wanted to tell this a lot of doctors are worried if ai comes what will happen and i think some time back also they said ai will replace the doctor no never because the doctors like me who are inter- who are intelligent working with engineering colleges i work with the sir vesit that is the vekananda engineering college in uh, chembur uh, same thing uh, in us uh, the google has engineers who are working on this and google has uh, analyzed more than a million images from shankarnathla and arvind but they have not come out with the product but uh, uh, media is a singapore based company made by an indian called bargo sosale who has no power by our indian and sevaraman in remedies who has made this ai with which is ai offline ai i am not promoting that i am i am fascinated by this technology where we can use a mobile phone to take retina photograph and that is why i am spending little time because i love this technology and uh, if uh, if anybody wants to blame me for uh, promoting I, i don't mind but uh, i want to say i am not getting any financial benefit so i don't have any financial interest the main thing is i promote this because it is a handheld we can use a mobile camera because everybody is very happy to say oh you can take a retina photograph with mobile phone it is not easy our own uh, doctor eye doctor and doctor ashish sharma in coimbatore has made a m2 red cam that is uh, made an adapter like this same thing uh, costing only 20000 rupees and it is uh, we can anybody can use that for so i made a technology called abcd seeing this movie anybody can dance i made it anybody can diagnose diabetic retinopathy so i hope uh, uh, our dean and uh, undergraduates are listening will be helpful me for me to diagnose so this is what anybody can screen for diabetic retinopathy what do you have to do you have to take a retina photograph and send it to us the artificial intelligence will diagnose whether you will have uh, uh, the uh, what do you call it in order to apply so you you can see this is the fundus the mobile phone and that's the attachment which is developed by remedio camera in bangalore which is this guy is a iit mit uh, the graduate and you can see that this is how the anybody can have, see we have trained three maharashtrian boys who are school dropouts they handle this Uh, and everybody knows uh, they can use the mobile phone so that's why i have used the technology this is actually done by the explanation given by anand sir i mean who's a scientist but uh, this is done by a boy who is just a, a 10th fail and we also have eight standard pass uh, women so our foundation has uh, 90% women headed by dr radhika so it is actually it is a uh, women who rule i see here the head of the department of uh, mona all are women here and then then this is how you can take a beautiful photograph you can anybody can take a photograph but this is not a good photograph and again you refocus you can take and that's all you you charge this mobile and you charge that device and take it to remote places that means you don't need electricity you don't need internet and there is an ai which you will see right now which is embedded in the phone that is a contribution by an indian engineer and an indian eye doctor like me and my team and i will show as per see you can take a photograph like this so the same photograph can be used by neurologist can be used by the retina specialist and can be used by diabetologist so uh, we can do so like this we can take photograph and send it and then you can label it right eye left eye 
and then uh, you can send you can enlarge you can see you can enlarge you can do so all that the boys can do so this is what uh, i want to convey so and then uh, you can also take seven segment if you want to dilate and you can do it in non vitreatic and this is a fundus on foot and size comparison and done by the company again i don't have any bad. and this is what <clears throat> the blue color is the one which is uh, picked up by the artificial intelligence and uh, the regular artificial intelligence needs internet what it needs it needs this picture and it analyzes and compares with the stored image in the cloud but here the stored image is analyzed in the phone itself so there is no need for internet so the, the image taken like this will be compared with the stored image and then the a machine will tell oh this has a retinopathy so you can see here this is a, a non proliferative type retinopathy this is the csme so this is a study we did we have validated this and then uh, we have used it in the first about 250 page and so is ai we had a research question is ai reliable to pick up those in need of seeing an eye doctor that's what is the research question glad we found this i am the first author we worked with soma shiva prasad radhika rasta jain ashwini all indians and we have published in jama as an original investigation diagnostic accuracy of community based diabetic retinopathy screening with an offline artificial intelligence system on a smartphone i think this is being projected in the american academy last year by alvin du who said this is a technology of future and natrajan has made it in india and this is the first of its kind in the world using an offline ai for screening dr and using semi skilled health workers now thanks to our team headed by dr radhika dr rasta ashwini and the municipal corporation of greater mumbai dispensaries by aditya jyoti foundation and the original pilot study we did in 2021 out of 250 patients and this is a field trial and we had this uh, patients of diabetes with a 5.5 years and 187 had diabetic retinopathy yeah i found 172 patients with no diabetic retinopathy which means 8% were over diagnosed by ai but ai was the right doctor we had sensitivity of 100% and specificity was 88.4% can you believe last year in august this particular article had the highest viewed articles in 30 days 4904 and the most cited in the 3 years and it's a great product even though my having hair rise is phenomenal it is not uh, just uh, i am proud in my foundation no okay, the india has to be proud for this in the whole world and i am treat now because i talk like this i went to 91 uh, cities and 15 countries in as a president of india and now we have uh, mexico uh, not mexico we have a brazilian doctor bought it they are using in brazil brazil in a place called uh, brasilia the capital of uh, brazil and also in uh, zambia and another country called east timor so this again shows what happens if the images are poor and it says reliability of ai for screening population for diabetic retinopathy in need of eye doctor is a, if i i i check up by an eye doctor is 100% which is of of some is from 15 patients with referable diabetic retinopathy and artificial intelligence is also was marked uh, this patient with referable in you use artificial intelligence you use eye doctors both had the same result so my idea is use any you can use your room boy he is a smartphone train him to do this you will get job opportunity that's why i'm working with the national skill development corporation uh, i forgot the in the name prime minister has made a you some youth yojana i think uh, skill development where you can refer them for early refer of diabetics great awareness of diabetes its effects and importance of uh, regular uh, follow up and then a uh, greater chat time uh, to refer diabetic okay timely medical and surgical intervention to prevent complete vision loss so the, you also can do the clinical staging then you, you can see this is the uh, completion of diabetes all this can be picked up by this photograph and this is a fund of the floor and angiography oct in diabetic macular edema and we have a oct angiography we are also doing that i mean this is to cover what all we have and uh, to remember is timely treatment can prevent diabetic blindness diabetic retinopathy can progress your symptoms be a part of this uh, monumental revolution fight against blindness from diabetes and uh, this is a 200 year old eye hospital we are uh, proud in madras uh, which uh, we are uh, i studied there my father my grandfather all three generations we studied there and uh, i'll conclude uh, by telling a uh, uh, swami vivekananda quote which i follow religiously and unfortunately swami vivekananda died at the age of 39 
uh, with the diabetes and people don't want to talk about it and he also had a vision loss because of vitreous hemorrhage in the last days of his life so he quoted this in the kumbhakonam railway station in uh, 1893 and before before he uh, went to chicago arise awake and stop not till the goal is reached and I, my last trip was to kumbhakonam uh, on march 15th before this covid so i have a video to show about uh, vitrectomy for diabetic retinopathy with that i think i will conclude and uh, you can see the screen uh, shama yes sir Okay. So this is a twenty-five gauge approach for a vitreous hemorrhage. Yeah. So. Yes, sir. We can. Is it playing? Yes, uh, no, sir. It's uh, it's on pause. I think. Oh yeah. One second. Hmm. One second. I think. Oh, something. Oh yeah. So what I want to show is uh, the uh, so here you see the one below the, the, this part is the infusion line. It is like you imagine a, a, bo- a regular a ball. You are putting a connection with a light. Uh, uh, what do you call a, a, a line a tube line with a fluid going in. And this is another opening which we are going through conjunctiva sclera into the eye. And another one here. I am taking late night stem for the undergraduates. I know that we have also more just there. So the idea is to do a three-port vitrectomy. So we visualize through the pupil. So we need a dilated eye. So we are going. We are operating from the side so that we don't touch the lens of the eye. And then we look through the microscope. We also have 3D system where nowadays we wear the 3D glasses and watch this on the screen and operate. And that's my dream. And what you are doing. So you are seeing. We are now cutting in one hand and using the light. That hand, and then cutting and suction using the. You are seeing that the whole slowly the media is cleared, and you see a fibrovascular proliferation, which is spreading from the center of the optic disc to the periphery. And now I am releasing the anterior traction as well as tangential traction. And now I am doing diathermy underwater. We are using a UD manual bipolar diathermy, and then cutting it. And still there is a small loose is happening. So you now releasing the anterior diaphragm. and finally trimming the it is like a uh, uh, like a flower where we are cutting all the fibrous tissue and di- alternatively diathermizing it so that the bleeding stops and in spite of that it bleeds you can imagine so, uh, such a amount of fibrous proliferation has happened that means the patient has diabetes for more than 20 years and he is not treated there is no laser done and that's how the eye is gone but now you can imagine the patient came be blind in the side and now you saw that already you can say we should have improved to 618 out this week because we have done a meticulous job of removing the blood and we know how to avoid complications and then do a laser all around except optic disc and macula and this is a, a instrument devised by my mentor second mentor dr raja jonoy called the retinal brush it is like taking a broomstick 
and uh, sweeping the floor. The, it's a soft tip cannula. You you can clean the surface of retina. You can see the car, and then finally do laser all around. And this is what we uh, do. This is a curved uh, laser probe. I think uh, I'm happy. The first window laser was done by me under the guidance of Dr. Vajanath in 1986, and we have gone a long way. And the first vitrectomy was done in 1975, and then uh, we have done, and that's how myself and uh, my teacher, Dr. Vajanath, uh, where we have a retina hall of fame, which is from L. Holes, who found the ophthalmoscope in 1851, until 2016, 242 retina specialists who have done contribution are there in the retina hall of fame. And I am telling all this to not to boast because I think nothing I'm going to get from all of you. But even if you appreciate what I'm going to get. I want friendship and I, I, my, my idea is to, uh, I think, uh, uh, stimulate or, or uh, inspire all of you to achieve more. So I, you can see every slide of mine will have a, uh, a, a Swami Vivekananda or every presentation. So this is a famous thing, the second line of Babara and Guru, they alone live who live for others and that's my policy today. I have crossed uh, 60 but I'm only 18 at uh, heart physically. I can tell. I can challenge anybody here non-stop. I can dance even today. And uh, so I, they alone live, will live for others. Rest are equivalent to death. And I think uh, I crossed my time, I think, right? Now I want uh, okay. undergraduates, postgraduates, uh, if they are allowed to come on the camera to ask me uh, questions. Oh, I sir, uh, sir uh, was a very good uh, discussion. And uh, there are a couple of questions from uh, yes. one from a uh, undergraduate and one from Care Madam herself. Uh, right. It is about uh, uh, the undergraduate question is uh, how do you expect uh, undergraduates like us to join in your movement in what in the work that you are doing for diabetic retinopathy? Well, th thank you very much. It's not a question. I'm happy taking as a volunteer. Swami Vivekananda's uh, birthday. January 12th is, uh, 12th has been declared by Government of India as the National Youth Day. So as undergraduate, we, we want you to start. I'm happy you're calling that as a movement. I have uh, uh, hair raising uh, goose pimples. The reason is uh, I'm happy with your suggestion. I'm happy you're, you're all undergraduates want to join the movement. And let us uh, please join the movement. And I think uh, we I'm trying to create a website called uh, stopblindness.org. And I, I think we will collect volunteers. And at present, what you can do is you can work with Dr. Mona, Dr. Shamak. They know what I'm doing. And each one, each clinic are doing where you can find an NGO who can get the any camera. Whether it could be a, a simple attachment to a, a smartphone or a Remedio or a Forest or a Zeiss or whatever. If you are accessing, you can yourself train to yourself to take photographs. On your free time, you can do screening yeah, anywhere in uh, remote parts of uh, Nagpur and around. Uh, or uh, you join, uh, the, you can write to me. I'll uh, probably put my email in the chat. Uh, you can all write to me. I think that's the best. And Dr. Mona can circulate. Uh, where is he? Uh, hello? Where is he? Oh, yeah. Hello, tell me. No, I'm mean, giving a talk. Where's the chat? Ah, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, sir, the, the second uh, question was by uh, Dr. Kher, Madam herself. I would like uh, Madam to ask the question if she's happy with it. Kher, Madam? Yes, sir, we have a Yes, we have a panoptic ophthalmoscope. Uh, which can take picture by iPhone attachment. Can it okay. be, uh, that can be used for our um, documentation purpose, sir? Definitely, definitely. I just saw your question just now. Written. Yes, definitely, I think so. Hey, anything, see, I think for a study, you need a lot of quality and other things. And also for AI, you need quality. I think quality has to be kept in mind. But our idea, uh, uh, the movement here is, if anywhere in a village you diagnose, a, if you just take a photograph, you will be able to find out many things. See, I forgot to add there, AI can predict the IHT. That means AI can study the, uh, the calibration of the, the, the caliber of the blood vessel and predict uh, MI, predict uh, even uh, stroke. And plus, uh, optic risk can be analyzed for glaucoma as well as uh, uh, predicting central dementia. Uh, 
algae alzheimer all that is a long way but it is possible if you have the photograph and then you take another photograph 10 years later you can compare i think ai will help in a lot of ways so i think any photograph but if it is a good quality photograph if it is maintained can be used as a documentation one for the patient and for ourselves for study and more images it will help for the machine learning or called a deep learning where it will help to refine the ai more uh, specific so that uh, anywhere you can use the ai and i am expecting one day we will have kiosk in the railway station and in the uh, and in the airport where you go and put your chin rest and it will be self operating i actually did a trial with the uh, dr sham sundar uh, in uh, bangalore where he is i indian institute of science uh, um, uh, uh, alumni and as a philips he was the research head he runs that uh, uh, you know the um, the university in uh, netherland where so he actually is trying to make a, a machine where the patient themselves can put their chin rest and then take photograph self selfie of the optic uh, fundus and the anterior segment thank you um sir sir it has been great to uh, hear you on diabetic retinopathy it was a very uh, informative talk and i'm sure all the undergraduates postgraduates and all those who could attend your uh, guest lecture today were uh, it was really informative for everyone and i hope we can have some more of these kind of guest lectures from you i am ready uh, i am ready actually i have made a, a, a youtube channel called with retina master in that i have yes. motivational talks everywhere so my i also given a talk on comparing my life with kung fu panda because uh, it's a animated movie the idea is yes. i think that i want to say uh, like uh, we have a saying in uh, tamil which is uh, 2000 years back yam petra inbam peruga yuvayagam that means whatever joy i get and i am having 24 7 i want the world to enjoy so that's my dream now my mission is make everybody happy who is not having problem you know i may have problem i don't want to tell that but i want to say i'm happy and i'm truthfully happy and i want everybody to be happy if somebody has exam somebody has uh, just doing their exam uh, just joined first mbbs somebody joined second mbbs somebody is joining ms and somebody is finished ms no job somebody has a clinic and no patient and uh, i run a hospital i have 100 staff so i think everybody has a problem according to me if you don't have a problem you don't have life till the time you breathe you will have problem so yeah, learn to do meditation learn to enjoy life and dance uh, out of happiness and that's what i do and i am ready i am ready for any so i will be happy in case uh, any any other person wants to say something coming on i know everybody is muted i saw i'm just seeing so 246 people <laughs> are logged in so anybody i why i am saying that anybody am uh, apart from you shamak is uh, i want them to remove their uh, what do you call it? inhibition because i had this when i was an undergraduate slowly it became my father helped me and i i blossomed into extrovert and then dr badinath made me still more extrovert he told me that in america they he has learned that a teacher should be questioned and that he says you have doubt please ask so i want if somebody has any other doubt don't feel shy it can be you may think it is a stupid question but it may be stupid but so what ask the doubt Ali, you will expose yourself, and then you will be bold, and later uh, you will become uh, brilliant. So, in case you have somebody has any question, in case they like to come on camera and ask, I'll be happy. <laughs> Otherwise, literally uh, talking to myself in the computer. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Sir, um, I think they might ask you a few questions on your uh, Gmail yes. address that you have uh, posted. Yes. Uh, hopefully they'll ask a few questions. I think uh, we can. No, can I have a volunteer? Any undergraduate and one for that. Uh, are you hearing? Sure, we can have a volunteer. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we can uh, put somebody as a volunteer, as a postgraduate student. Maybe that in our uh, college we can have one postgraduate as well as one. on the um, uh, final mbps part 1 that we can have the two the volunteers uh, definitely we will talk to them and uh, let you know about it sir sure no no right now i said if anybody wants to come on the camera that's what i am they are all waiting now mona can tell up one student no? so, um, 
I am still not very versed with uh, well versed with uh, artificial intelligence, and it still has a long way to go. But then, yes, it will come in a big way, and uh, I'm sure that uh, it will be a great boon for uh, uh, all the retina specialists and all the ophthalmologists to uh, manage diabetic retinopathy and bring down the numbers uh, for treatment uh, for this condition. Um, I. Uh, as of now, I I feel that uh, since Sir has covered everything, I don't need to add anymore. Uh, Muna Madam, please go ahead and uh, we can conclude the session. Uh, thank you, Sir, for your very well informed talk on diabetic retinopathy, and we uh, thank you so much for updating us on artificial intelligence. And uh, I know we all are benefited from this. Now I request Dr. Aditi Gadegoni to deliver a vote of thanks. Over to you, Aditi. Uh, good morning, sir. Morning. Thank you, uh, very young-hearted Dr. Natarajan sir, for enlightening us and on the impression of uh, very almost uh, topmost sight-threatening disease that is diabetic retinopathy. I also thank Dr. Uh, Mukadam sir for moderating the session. With this, we conclude the lectures. My thanks goes to all the students who are attending this uh, very insightful lecture, my colleagues at Department of Ophthalmology and the JNMC Alumni Association for this initiative. We have been fortunate to have uh, the insight of Padma Shri Dr. Natarajan sir today. I am thankful for our patron, Honorable Shri Dattaji Meghe sir, the Chancellor sir, Honorable uh, VP Mishra sir, the Pro Vice Chancellor, Honorable Bodle sir, the Vice Chancellor, and Honorable uh, Vagmare sir, the Pro Vice Chancellor sir, Dr. Ghevde sir, the Registrar, Dr. S. S. Patel sir, the Coordinator, and Dr. Mude sir, the Dean. I also thank Dr. Kher Madam, Professor and LCD of Department of Ophthalmology, Dr. Daigavane sir, who is Professor of Do Department of Ophthalmology, Dr. Tidke sir, Professor and Joint Secretary of Alumni Association, and Dr. Mona ma'am, uh, Mona Sune ma'am, Associate Professor and Convener of the event. I would also like to thank Dr. Shorya Acharya, sir, di Director of Student Welfare Sale, Dr. Thute, Madam President of Alumni Association, Dr. Pisukar, sir, Secretary of the Alumni Association, and Dr. Jakta, the Coordinator. We sincerely uh, hope that the topic discussed today have provided a very fresh perspective. And uh, I hope all the undergraduate students will be able to ABCD uh, the diabetic retinopathy. I also I would also like to thank uh, the technical committee uh, who has uh, made uh, this webinar uh, or this lecture uh, very easy. Uh, and uh, once again, I would like to thank everybody, each and everybody whosoever has contributed for making this event successful. Thank you very much. Thank you, and I think uh, it's a great uh, alumni event. I didn't realize that somehow it went with a departmental lecture. So uh, it's a, I think it's a great alumni. I think it's excellent. Probably every alumni should learn. I mean uh, that uh, they can do some education like this for the present and the past students. Great, really nice. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. So much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank